Gnolf The rough wooden bar Gnolf sat at was covered in old mead and scraps of food. It was once his favorite tavern. He tried to remember what he actually used to like about it, and when it had changed. It had turned from a nice, quiet place, where a lowlife like him could get some work, to a place filled with young, rich wizards from the White Palace. Self-entitled little snobs who acted like they owned the city, and indeed did, as far as he could see. They sat in the best seats, spoke loudly, laughed louder, and generally made him angry. It was probably when they started to sell wine. That was surely it. The four cups had always been his kind of rough. It was near the docks, so was normally filled with fishermen, smugglers, sailors, and sellswords like him. It was small, had rough wooden floors, rough people, and smelled either of stale booze, stale breath, or stale food. It had been perfect. Now, it was ruined. He used to get work as a bodyguard for the traders walking home at the end of the night, or a well-tipped minstrel aiming to keep his life in gold, but not much anymore. He was far from the most dangerous thing in the city now. In the past, people would look at him in fear. Now they were the scary ones. The pimple-faced young lads with stick arms and less muscle than a teenage girl. Not that they'd take a job for a few gold, when they could just trick your eyes while giving you copper. Gunolf just shook his head, as something collided with the clay mug in his hand, which half spilled. A gale of laughter accompanied the not very accidental knock to his well-muscled arm. He turned from his stool and stood up. He was tall, and looked like what he was, a person who got paid to fight and kill people. He was a Carthian in Fredonia, and they could all tell. He was a good half a foot taller than most of the locals, and was muscled from using a mace for years. Besides, he had a big scar down his face from a knife fight, which he'd won. It looked awful, but helped business. It ran from his forehead, down one side of his face, through his eyebrow, and to his cheek. He'd been lucky to keep the eye. It was hideous, and no one could look away from it when he spoke to them. He wasn't the sort to find a wife or charm the girls, and he'd been average-looking before. But the scar had changed him, made him certain he was born for a bloody life. No one could love that. But it did help him get jobs. Though, the guards all knew him. He looked at the little shit who had knocked his drink. The lad stood leering drunkenly, and smiled at him. Long white robe, same as his four or five mates, all around seventeen, but no more. Skinny, ugly face, and a wisp of hair on his chin that was supposed to be a beard. Perfect teeth, and his robe was so clean it shone bright. Gunnel's own shirt was now covered in mead, the closest it had come to a wash in weeks. He hadn't had a decent job in that long. Gunolf looked at the young mage's sneering face. Rich. So rich. He looked down at the boy's boots. Handcrafted leather, silver buckles, and pointed at the end. On his hands, three fine rings. Two diamonds set in gold, and a red ruby in silver. Gnolf knew they were for curses, or magic spells. They all had them, and they cost more than a horse or a year's wages. He looked at the boy who stared back. Clearly no apology coming. What ugly? the boy said. Gnolf knew the type. The boy was spoiling for a fight. That's why they came to his side of the river. They could do whatever they wanted, and no one did a shit about it. Not only were they strong in magic, they were rich as sin. Magic passed through the bloodline mostly, and all the magic families were like nobility. They just shouldn't be in a place like this. 
They belonged on the other side of the river, where the streets smelled of shit that came from horses, not people. They had places they could go and be around their own kind, but they liked to slum it and make life harder for people like him. Commons with no magic. What skinny rat didn't want to square off against him and prove themselves? The scar was bad for that. He looked again at the wizard boy, his drunk, noble face. He knew he'd be fast enough to get his dagger into the lad, but his friends would finish Gnolf off. He'd seen a few fights against local thieves and tough guys against the wizard. There were different schools of magic, but they were all dangerous. He'd seen a guy draw a sword against one, and the wizard simply held out his hand. A fucking ball of fire leapt from it. The man was caught in the blaze, his clothes and skin alight in moments, and he took a good few minutes to die. He rolled on the cobblestone street, burning and screaming, crying like a child. His friend ran in to stab his mate, put him out of his misery, give him some peace. But the wizard just pointed his hands at him and watched the blazing man burn. Not even the passing city guard did anything, just dragged the charred body away once it was over. No charges, no follow-up. Who would stand as a witness against them? Nothing, Gunolf said and sat back down. He ordered another drink and sat fuming, angry with himself. He had to leave this shithole before he ended up dead. It was one thing to fight for a living. He drew a blade, the other man did too, and he knew the one who had the best training, or was most vicious, would win. Even if the other guy looked more skilled, his huge mace normally smashed most swords blunt after a few blocks. These little fucks would kill him with a few words. Or, more likely, use those words to get a pack of dogs to eat him, then shit him all over the street. Thus would end the noble tale of Gnolf. White robes, they were called. All of them were too young, too rich, and too spoiled. He had heard it said they started their training at about the age of six, so by eighteen, when they were men, they knew a lot. Curses, flames and pain, control. They could actually turn iron into gold, which made him think gold should be worthless, but somehow it wasn't, because everyone else had to earn it. The only magic normal people like him could use was enchanted items. Objects with magic in them, like swords that set on fire, or mugs that always stayed cold. The wizards made a lot of money selling items like that, and they were banned from the gambling dens, but got in anyway. Gnolf drained the rest of his new meat in one single quaff, and then stood to leave. He swayed slightly, and then looked to his feet. His mace was gone. It was about the only thing of value he owned. But it was heavy, and he didn't like it hanging off his hip all night. So he set it down at his feet. He looked up, and sure enough, it sat on the table of his wizard friends. Gnolf thought about it, and then thought, Fuck it. Tonight's as good a night as any to die. He was thirty-one, and that was old for a sellsword. He barely slept, too many dead faces to haunt his dreams, and he had about two gold to his name. He wasn't letting anyone take his mace. He walked up to the table and looked at the five smug white robes. His mace was in front of the one who had spilt his drink. It sat on the table, and he was touching it. That's mine, Gunolf said with a bit of a slur. Indeed! A fine weapon, if old. I thought you wouldn't leave without it. So, are you ready to be a man? This was all said by a young mage who looked like a weak-chinned girl, but an ugly one. Without their magic, they'd be nothing. But they had it, so they got everything. Sure, let's get to it. But I want to use the mace, 
he said. The boy laughed. Fine, he said. Gnolf took the mace back. It was heavy, with a steel-plated handle, and an iron head that was sharpened on four sides. It was a one-hander, but had a long handle so it could be two-handed when he needed a little extra power. He kept it sharp and loved it. It had saved his life many times. It was a damned good weapon against a rapier or noble thin blade. The bartender yelled out, You boys use magic and you're not welcome back. He's a regular. The mage laughed. Aren't you lucky? Okay, that is fine. He stood and walked out the front door of the tavern, as did all his friends. Grinnell followed them, and a decent crowd of people filed out after him to watch him die. The night was a pleasant one. The moon was high in the sky, and it was fairly warm. Gnolf stood on the cobbles across from the rough ring of mages and the now gathering crowd. He let the mace swing and stretched his muscles. He was the right amount of drunk for a fight, enough to not feel pain as much and be a bit fearless, but still able to move with some speed. Gnolf knelt down on the cobbles, and held his mace high. Dear Lord Helvin, bless my mace, and let it smash my foe down in your name, he said. The boy laughed at him. You Carthians, your gods are too far away to help. The mage stood across from him. So, no magic means I can't fight. He looked around and saw someone passing by trying not to see what was clearly a fight about to occur. The mage grabbed the man, a city guard, off duty and walking home. He looked him in the eyes. Sir, would you kill this man for me? He asked the guard. The guard looked at Gnolf, who saw the confusion on his face. Then the boy started muttering under his breath, a spell. The look on the guard's face changed, and he simply drew his short sword and lunged at Gnolf. The thrust was straight, hard, and almost finished him off. Gnolf leaped to the side in time to avoid it, but felt the metal on his skin. It ripped through his shirt, and the guard pulled back and slashed again. Gnolf blocked it with the mace head and struck back. The guard was fast and parried it. They traded blows again and again but he used the mace for a reason. The guard's sword was getting battered and blunt. Gnolf looked at him. He knew he was stronger as well. The guard slashed again, and Gnolf hit with his mace as hard as he could. It crashed into the sword blade and forced the guard back. He smashed the mace down at the guard again and again, and the sword got knocked away. It flew out of his hands and fell to the cobbles. Gnolf raised his elbow, smashing the guard in the face as hard as he could. He flew back and landed hard to the cobblestones, blood running down his face. Stay down! You're under magical control! Gnolf yelled. I don't want to kill you! The mage laughed as he drew a dagger from behind him and passed it to the guard. I said, kill him! The guard grabbed the dagger and leapt fully at Gnolf, blade in hand. He hit Gnolf hard, knocking him to the ground. Gnolf dropped his mace as he fell, but managed to get his hands up to the hands that held the dagger. He was holding the blade inches away from his throat. Gnolf looked in the guard's eyes. He'd fought to the death before, and never seen a face like this. He was so calm, no rage, know anything, but just pushing the dagger down, harder and harder. Blood dripped down his face. Two teeth were broken, but he didn't seem to notice or care. The guard kneed Knolf in the stomach, and he felt the dagger cutting his neck. He was losing strength in his arms and had to be fast. He let go with one hand and held the dagger with the other. He hit the guard as hard as he could in the face with his free hand. He saw his massive fist hit the man. It broke more teeth, but nothing. 
the guard just grinned. You'll die, the mage said. He was still muttering some shit, making the man fight. Gnull felt his grip slipping and reached to the side. His mace lay in the street, and he grabbed it with his free hand. He gripped it near the head and smashed it into the guard's skull. He heard the crack, but the guard kept trying to stab him. Blood poured down the side of his face as Gnull smashed the mace into his head again and again. The guard finally died, collapsing onto him. Half his head caved in. It was an awful death. The mage just shrugged. Oh well, next time, tavern scum. See you soon. He turned and walked back to the tavern with his friends, handing one of them a pouch of coins. Gnulf shoved the guard off himself and stood on shaking feet. He looked at the guard's body. His skull was caved in, his head was cracked open, and brains were showing. It was pretty rough, even for him. He'd cracked a lot of skulls, but never let himself go crazy with it. The guard had only stopped when his body was dead. The gathered crowd stared at the corpse. Some seemed sad. None spoke or looked much at him. A city guard. Try explaining that. He'd be hung for this, and they seemed to know it. He shoved through a gap in the watchers, and walked as calmly as he could up the street. After some distance, he stopped and crouched against a wall. He looked at his mace. It was filthy. He found its cleaning rag in his pocket, and started to wipe off the bits of blood and skull that were plastered on it. He hated wizards. <laughs>